How do you make an application more scalable? The first thing you have to do is figure out where the bottlenecks are and then you can start to discuss some possible solutions. In this video, I'll show you how we're going to make our webhook system more scalable. Let's start by discussing where we left off in the previous video, where we added support for asynchronously processing our webhooks using in-memory channels. We have our webhook publisher publishing some events, let's say an order was created, and this event was published to an in-memory channel. So the publisher can complete immediately and return control back to the caller. Now in the background, we had a webhook processor component, which was a background service, and it was listening for messages on our in-memory channel. And every time a message would come in, it would process all of the subscribers for a given event in a batch and send all of them a webhook one by one. And this is exactly where our bottleneck is in the current implementation. Let's explore this from a different angle. We have our application service as one component, and then we have many external subscribers for a given webhook event. So when a request reaches our API endpoint, we're going to trigger some business logic, and then a side effect of this could be publishing an event. This event would be published to an in-memory channel, and our consumer would handle this event. This would be the webhook processor component, and it would immediately send multiple HTTP requests to any subscribers. And the problem here is that the number of subscribers is theoretically infinite. So if we have an infinite number of subscribers, that means means our webhook processor would need to send an infinite number of HTTP requests. Now you can see how this can become problematic to scale. We first have to fetch the subscribers from our database and then send each one of them an HTTP request. And the more subscribers we have, the slower this operation becomes. So let me quickly show you what this looks like inside of our API. We have the post endpoint for creating an order. And one of the side effects of creating an order is dispatching an order created event. This is handled by the webhook webhook dispatcher class, and inside of the dispatch async method, we are going to write a webhook dispatch record into the respective channel. And then inside of the services folder, we have our webhook processor, which is a background service that's listening for any messages being sent to this channel, and is going to pick up this message and asynchronously process it, and the processing is handled by the process async method. And all we're doing here is retrieving the webhook subscriptions for this event type from our database and then sending them an HTTP request. Let me quickly show you how this works at runtime. My containers are up and running thanks to the Aspire orchestration and I sent a request behind the scenes to create an order. So we have a distributed trace here that contains this request and if we take a look inside, you can see the one trace where we are sending the API request and publishing a message to the channel and then immediately consuming from that channel and sending the respective HTTP request to any webhook subscribers. So this is the part we want to optimize now and let me discuss a possible solution. We're going to evolve our system from using an in-memory message bus with the channel type in .NET to a proper message broker. So I'll be using RabbitMQ, but any kind of message broker works just the same. It's important that this is a distributed message broker, which allows us to persist the messages and works separately from our API. This is going to allow us to horizontally scale our API if we need to do that to meet the demand. And later, it's also going to allow us to scale our consumers. Now we're going to talk about this in a future video, but for now, let's see how our system changes. So we still have our publisher publishing some event, except this time we're publishing this to an event queue. And this is a queue inside of our message broker. So now we will have a consumer handling this event publish. And what it's going to do is just find the subscribers for a given webhook. And then for each of the subscribers is going to queue up another message. So this is going to be a significantly faster operation and we can even do it in a batch. And instead of talking with external APIs where we can't control what the response time is, we're going to publish a simple message to a queue. So after we complete this, we acknowledge that we have consumed the event. So now these messages land on a separate queue, which means we also need a separate consumer for this message. So now what's going to happen is we're going to consume the message from the webhook queue 
and here we are only responsible for sending one HTTP request to the respective subscribers. So now we have reduced the scope of the overall work. Instead of sending a large number of requests to all of our subscribers, we are only handling one subscriber at a time by consuming a respective message from the queue. On a component level, we still have our application service, but now we're introducing a message broker component. So the flow is very similar to before. We're going to publish an event, except this time we're going to publish it to the queue of our message broker. So let's call this the event queue. Then we'll have a consumer that's going to fan out this message to all of our possible subscribers by publishing a separate message to the queue. And then we can have any number of consumers handling the messages from this queue and they will be responsible for sending the requests to our external subscribers. So let me show you how we're going to implement this in our code. I'll start by introducing support for running RabbitMQ inside of our Aspire orchestrator. So let me add an Aspire package, and the one I'm going to install is called Aspire Hosting Rabbit MQ. So let's install the latest version. And then in the program file of the Aspire app host, let's create our queue. I will say builder, add Rabbit MQ. Let's give it a name, I'll call it Rabbit MQ. Let's add a volume. And let's also use the management plugin so that we can review the queues that are created inside of our broker. And then I'll add a reference to the queue instance from our webhooks API and I'll also wait for it to start before starting the API instance. So this is all we need on the Aspire orchestrator to start running RabbitMQ. Now inside of our webhooks API, we need something to communicate with RabbitMQ. And my favorite package to do this is Mass Transit. So I'll go ahead and install the Mass Transit RabbitMQ NuGet package and then let's configure mass transit to connect to our RabbitMQ instance. I'm going to comment out the webhook processor background service as well as our channel because we won't be needing them anymore. And then let's add the mass transit services. I will say builder services add mass transit and then let's provide a delegate to configure our mass transit bus. So I will say that I want to use the kebab case endpoint name formatter. And this is just going to affect how we are naming our queues. And then I have copilot here suggesting a completion. And fundamentally, this is what I want to do. However, I'm going to type it out myself. So I will say bus config using rabbit and queue. And then we need a delegate accepting the context and a config object. And we're going to say config configure endpoints and this is going to automatically configure the endpoints on our message bus and then I'm going to say to connect to the RabbitMQ instance using a connection string and I'm going to say builder configuration get connection string and I will say RabbitMQ. Now this is the same name that we assigned to the resource in the Aspire orchestrator. So this is a simple way how I can connect my application to the RabbitMQ instance. Now one more thing I want to do is to introduce telemetry for RabbitMQ and mass transit gives me a simple way to achieve this. So I just need to add mass transit as a source. Now, if you don't want to hard code this, there is a constant in the mass transit namespace. So you have to go to mass transit logging diagnostics headers and specify the default listener name. One more thing I'm going to do is to install an additional NuGet package. Let me look for MPG SQL. And I actually want to install the MPG SQL open telemetry package because I want to add support for tracing for my MPG SQL provider. So now I can say add MPG SQL and we added some additional telemetry into our solution. Now let's see how we're going to use mass transit to update our implementation. And we're going to start from the webhook dispatcher. So instead of using the webhook channel, we're going to use the abstraction from mass transit called the publish endpoint. And now I have to update the dispatch async method to use the publish endpoint, and I will call the publish method. I can still continue sending the webhook dispatch method, but let's actually rename this into an event. Let's call it webhook dispatched. And we will no longer need to take care of propagating the activity ID, so I can omit this part, and I'm also going to remove this property from the webhook dispatched message. So now our publisher is complete. So that's all we need to do on the publishing side. Now we actually need to consume this message. So let's go ahead and add a respective consumer. I'm going to add it in the same folder here and I will call this the webhook dispatched consumer. This is going to be an internal and sealed type. We're going to inject the database context because we'll need to talk to the database. 
and to implement a consumer you just implement the iConsumer interface from Mass Transit. Of course we have to specify our message type which is webhook dispatched and then you can implement your logic inside of the consume method. We can take the message content from the consume context so let me grab the message and then what do I want to do here? Part of the work that I want to do here is inside of the webhook dispatcher. So here I'm fetching my subscriptions and then for each subscription I'm sending an HTTP request. What I want to do now is for each subscription I want to publish a message to the queue. So let's go ahead and grab the subscriptions. I'll need to take the event type from my message and then for each subscription I'm going to publish a message to the queue. Of course I don't have the message type yet so let's create it. This should contain enough information for me to consume a webhook. So let's call this the webhook triggered event and I'm going to include the subscription ID, the event type and this is mostly metadata. Then I need the webhook URL and this is where I'll be sending my actual webhook and then I need the actual webhook contents, let's call this the data. And now I can use the consume context to publish a new message because this is asynchronous, let's await it. And then I need to create a new webhook triggered instance. And now I can specify the subscription ID, the event type, the webhook URL, and we're going to include the payload from our message, so let's just pass in the data property. Instead of publishing these messages one by one, there's also an alternative approach where we can say context publish batch and this is just going to publish a batch of messages. So instead of publishing them one by one, I can say something like this. Let me say subscriptions, select, and then for each of them I'm going to create a webhook triggered event. So let me write this delegate. I'll have to update the subscription reference here so that this compiles and now I can publish a batch of messages using mass transit. So either approach is fine, I'm going to leave the for each loop here just for simplicity. And then let's move the webhook trigger type into its own file. So now we need to implement a consumer for the webhook triggered message. So let's go ahead and add a new type. I'll call this the webhook trigger consumer and what should actually go inside of this. So let me make this an internal and sealed type. We need to implement the iConsumer interface and I'll specify the webhook triggered message. Let's implement this interface which is only the consume method and this is where we would actually handle our consumption and send an HTTP request to the respective webhook URL. Now previously we were doing this using the webhook processor. Let me find it. So here we would be consuming the webhook dispatched message from a channel and then resolving the webhook dispatcher to call the process async method. And essentially we want to take this part here where we are instantiating an HTTP client and then sending a webhook payload. So let me copy all of this and let's go back to our consumer. So this is the logic that we want to implement. So now I just need to add the missing pieces. I need the HTTP client factory. Let's go ahead and inject that. And then the second thing I'll need is my database context so that I can write the update into the database. So let's go ahead and inject the database context. And now I need to make a couple of additional changes. Instead of accessing the subscription here, I can access the context and message. And there should be an event type property here, but I probably made a mistake. Yes, because this should be a record. So now if I go back to the consumer, this will compile and I can just update this to include the respective properties from my message. So now I have the subscription ID, the event type, the payload all present on the webhook triggered event. Now let's update the payload to no longer be a generic type. So I'll get rid of the generic argument and just make this an object. This is also going to make our serialization easier and now I can fix the compiler warning here and then let's specify the webhook URL from our message. So now I'll go on and fix the remaining errors and this should now compile after fixing this and let's take another look and everything seems to check out. So inside of this consumer we're handling one specific webhook for one specific subscription ID. This is one external service subscribing to our webhook. And for that service, we are handling this event and publishing the payload represented by this event. So we can either succeed and record a successful delivery attempt, or we're going to record a failure. Now, one more thing I want to do here after we get a response is I want to ensure that this is a success status code. So if it's not successful, we're going to throw an exception 
and if also something goes wrong, we're also going to get an exception. And now we have to do some cleaning up. So first of all, the webhook processor is no longer required. So I'm going to delete it. Second, the webhook dispatcher is now only responsible for dispatching the messages. So I can completely omit the process async method and any dependencies other than the publish endpoint. So now our dispatcher is only using the publish endpoint to send a message to the broker. We'll have to update our service registrations. And one more thing that's remaining is to register the message consumers with mass transit. So I will say bus config add consumer and I'm going to specify the webhook dispatched consumer. And then let's also specify the webhook triggered consumer. And now we should be ready to start the application and test out if this is working the same as before. The orchestrator is starting up behind the scenes and you can see our containers are now running. If I open up the details for the RabbitMQ resource, we will be able to find the username and password or logging into our management dashboard. So let me click the URI here and I'm going to specify the username of guest and the password that I picked up from the environment variables. So now I want to take a look at the exchanges that were created here. And you can see we have an exchange for the message, the webhook dispatch message and the webhook triggered message and the respective exchange for the queues. Now, what are the bindings like? Let's take a look at this. So the webhook dispatched exchange is going to send messages to the webhook dispatched exchange. The first one represents our message contract and you can see the namespace here. And the second one is the message name in kebab case. So now this exchange is going to route this message to the respective queue. So you can see we have a webhook dispatched queue and this is where we will be consuming the messages. We also have a webhook triggered queue. So these are the two queues handling the events and the individual webhooks. If I go into my HTTP file and send a request to create an order, you will see that this completes pretty fast. And back in the Aspire dashboard, we want to take a look at the distributed traces. We have the one trace here for creating an order. And you can see that this time it's a lot more complicated. So we still have our original API request for creating an order we're writing something to the database. This trace is from our Postgres instrumentation and then we're dispatching our webhook by sending an event to RabbitMQ. And after this span here, our original trace completes and then we move into processing the webhook. So you can see some additional spans here all are processing the webhook triggered message and sending a webhook request to our subscribers. And you can see how all of this is happening in parallel. And this time we are only processing one webhook request at a time. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to smash the like button that's going to be right under this video. I will appreciate it very much and it's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Now in a future video, we're going to explore how we can update our architecture to split up the webhooks API into a couple of components. This is going to further improve the scalability of our system and allow us to dynamically scale the system based on the current load. Currently, the webhooks API is responsible for accepting webhook messages, publishing them to a queue, and also consuming all of the webhooks. If we split the process of publishing a webhook event from processing it into a separate component, it's going to allow us to scale the processor separately. And that's something we're going to explore in the next video. If you want to get a better understanding of mass transit and RabbitMQ, then I suggest that you watch this video next. Check out my software architecture courses to improve your skills. I'm going to leave the link to the courses in the pinned comment under this video. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, stay awesome.